Hello all. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Mafel P1CC jigsaw. Having seen me use it in some vids, a couple of folks have asked for a review of it, and on social media groups, it's a common question. Which jigsaw should I get, and is the P1CC worth it? Well, that's always a subjective question, but hopefully this vid will show you how the Mafel is unique among jigsaws, if nothing else. I'll start with a look around the saw and its accessories, then do a few demo cuts, and end with my thoughts, what I like and don't like. Only currently available as a mains corded barrel grip model, the first thing you notice about the saw is it's a reassuring lump and feels built like a tank. The stroke rate speed dial is positioned at the back of the motor body numbered 1 from 6 from 800 to 3000 strokes per minute. On the left side of the saw are the on off switch and dial for the pendulum. On top of the saw is the blade release and lock. Pull out to unlock, insert or change the blade then push back in to lock. On the right side of the saw is a release lever for the base. Just lift the lever and slide the base off. The tilting base can be fit either way round. It's important to remember it's the forwardmost slot in the tilting base you use for the clamp on the saw. It won't clamp properly if they use the rear slot. On the tilting base, a lever on the left releases the foot to bevel from 0 to 45 degrees. On the right, just behind the blade, is an indicator for the bevel angle. With your angle set, just push the lever back to lock. On the standard fixed base, there's only one slot for the clamp and it has position arrows on the saw and base to help too. A nice little feature on the fixed base is its ability to slide back a little so the blade is at the front of the base. Seen on some metal saws but unique on jigsaws for wood, the Mafel uses an extra thick shaft for the blade. There's no guide rollers like on other jigsaws to guide the blade and control the pendulum action. It's all done via the shaft. It's near double the diameter of most other jigsaws. Onto accessories, you've seen the tilting base briefly, but a neat standard accessory is the multifunction parallel guide. Based around a very stiff steel bar, the business end opens up to reveal two pins nested inside, one with a sharp end point, the other with a straight 4mm pin. These are for when using as a circle guide, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Inserted into the saw base, red side down, it can act as an outrigger for extra support. You do get two fixing knobs, which can both be used in the fixed base. The angle base can only secure the guide with one knob. I tend to just leave one in each for the most part, and the fit is good in either base. Opening the red tab up on the base, then pushing back to lock into place, it can now function as a parallel guide. Although it locks nice and firm, it is plastic and quite a short reference face. This makes it about as good as any other as a parallel fence, which for jigsaws is generally a bit poor, but it works well enough. All the guide's features, including running on a guide rail, will work with the tilting base too. There is a dust extraction port with the saw as standard. With one side blanked, the other with extraction, channels run down the saw base with a hole in the mouth to whisk the dust away. You also get a sort of blanking plate in the kit that doesn't really blank the channels and seems equally pointless either way up, but it's there if you want it. The extraction port will only fit the fixed base, not the tilting. On the underside of the fixed base there are two thin channels each side to allow the saw to run on the Mafel or Bosch guide rails. Of course the rail lifts the saw, so Mafel include what they call a glide in the kit which can mount either side of the fixed base, steadying the saw. The tilting base only has a guide rail slot down its center and the glide will only fit on one side of it, albeit either way round. The number one thing that separates this jigsaw from all others is its W1 Qnex blade. These double thick blades are incredibly stiff and will only fit this saw. It will accept all standard bayonet jigsaw blades though, but as you can see, even this good quality Bosch blade here has a good deal of flex in it by comparison. With three blades lined up here, you can see more clearly the difference. On the left, a standard Bosch 1.33mm T101B. In the middle, the Bosch Precision Extra Thick 1.8mm T144DP blades. Lovely blades these. And on the right, Mafel's 2.88mm W1 Qnex blade. 
The Q-Nex is basically two blades bonded together, the second blade thickness creating a spine along the standard bayonet, adding more rigidity to the fixing point. The back side of the blade is tapered from roughly 2.9 at the teeth to 1mm at the back. This makes the blade really agile on circular cuts. Before we get to some cutting clips, one last accessory is the anti-splinter guards. I find they make all the differences, whichever blade you're using. They come with barely a nick in them for the blade. The idea being you insert it up to the particular blade you're using, then start the saw and bump it into position, creating a splinter guard right for your blade. Pretty ungainly, but does the job. Right, let's cut something. In all the cuts you'll see me do, I'll be using the W1 Qnex blade. While there are other things that set this saw apart, it's those things, combined with the Qnex blade, that make its abilities unique, so using any old jigsaw blade would be a pointless demonstration. I'm not forcing the saw on this cut, just weaving about, hopefully demonstrating the ease with which it turns, thanks to the taper on the rear of the blade. You can really push this saw if you want to. With 900 watts of power, it really won't mind much. But this not being a head-to-head -head speed test, which it would win, Pushing the saw would demonstrate very little to you here, so I'll take it easy and let the saw do the work on these demo cuts. So this is, I think, 44mm treated structural timber, and my wavy little cut, besides being easy, has come out square. Here I set up a rail to see if I can get a cut both square and square, if you know what I mean. Still using the Qnex blade. And as you can see, square and square. For this cut, I've swapped to some 25mm MDF as the Qnex blade isn't long enough to cut through the 44mm timber at a 45 degree bevel. Looking from underneath and using a combi square, I'd say that's a good 45 degree cut, wouldn't you? So for this last cut demo, I'll be using the circle guide. I'm drilling a 4mm hole for the pin here. As I said earlier, there is a point pin for this if you'd rather not drill into your piece. On the guide, note the pin is in the hole behind the bar, so it's in line with the blade. Again, the cut edge is a good 90 degree. And this is the thing with this saw, really. I've used a lot of quality jigsaws in my time, from Hulls, Her, Bosch GST 160s, Festool Trions, DeWalt's, and none of them have cut like the Maffel saw and Qnex blade combo. They all wander. If anyone tells you they can match the squareness of the cuts you've seen with another jigsaw and blade combo, frankly, they're lying. Now, clearly, some of the setups, especially those with the rail you've seen me do, that's not what most of us would use a jigsaw for. But the point was to demonstrate something unique among this type of saw. I don't normally use a jigsaw with a guide rail, but I have found on occasion running it on guide rails is great for cutting kingspan type insulation or sheet metals. The squareness of the cut using the Qnex blade has meant I've been able to cut decorative rafter tails with confidence and any number of scribes. I always know the blade is going where I want it to. With standard blades, you'll near enough get the same wonder and deflection you would with any other high-end jigsaw. But even then, the way the Maffel puts the power down is quite unlike any other jigsaw I've used. It can just pound through material, but at the same time, is smooth and controllable enough for very fine scroll type cuts. It feels good in the hand, nice and comfortable using it right way up or upside down. There's no such thing as a perfect tool though, and the Maffel has its faults. One basic thing it's missing is a light. The 18V Bosch you may have seen in my other vids has one, and I do miss it on the Maffel. 
Next, and something you may have noticed I omitted from demonstrating, is dust extraction. With the pendulum backed off on fine cuts, you can see it clears some debris, but anything remotely vigorous is kind of pointless. On jigsaws, for dust extraction to be effective, there needs to be a shroud over the blade. Again, the 18V Bosch has a clear plastic blade shroud, but there isn't one available for the Mafel. I wouldn't use it often on a jigsaw to be honest, but it would be nice to have so I can keep a work area clean on site when needed. I also wish Mafel offered a slightly longer and or a fine tooth version of the Cunex blade. As it stands, there's only the one fairly rough cutting blade available. One final gripe is, there's no cordless version. Most of my saws are used of extraction, so I don't mind the cable. A jigsaw is one of those tools, especially when working out and about, on site or whatever, where a cordless version is a godsend. There is a whisper in the wind that a cordless P1CC is coming, but when at this point would just be speculation. So if you've been wondering what all the fuss was about with the Mafel jigsaw and been pondering buying one, I hope this has helped one way or another. Personally, I think it's superb. I'll try and get round to putting technical specs in the description, but all the online dealers have the specs listed if you're interested. And finally, before I go, I must shout out my buddy Jack on the DG Neox channel. He threatened to attack me if I didn't. Thanks for watching.